Good evening. I'm John Pomeranz. With me is my erstwhile co-moderator. Say hello. Hi, my name is Saul Jaffe. Thank you, Saul. Um, we are moving on to the next phase, which is the uh, opportunity to question the seated Worldcon Fort Chengdu, this, uh, the next Worldcon. Uh, before they are asked any questions, they would like to make a brief presentation. I'll take this opportunity to remind you that if you have questions for Chengdu, uh, you should submit them by <coughs> writing them on a piece of paper and arranging to have that paper brought forward so that we can read them. Hi, Ben Yalohi Him. I am co-chair of the Chengdu Worldcon. Uh, with me, introduce yourselves, please. I am Dave McCarty. I am the Hugo Administrator and Site Selection Administrator for the Chengdu Worldcon. I'm Carolina Gomez Lagerlo. I'm doing the program for the international part of the Chengdu. And Standing in the back there is Kevin Stanley, who is Deputy Presiding Officer for the business meeting. Um, a bunch of things have happened since I spoke to people at the Worldcon. Uh, a bunch of things are not going as we had hoped. Uh, some things are making progress. Uh, there is finally a website up. There is, it's actually a dual language website. You can go from uh, English to Chinese. We are able to take memberships, but not via credit card. We are getting very close to being able to take memberships by credit card, but we are not quite there yet. Talk to me offline about banks. Um, we have not yet completely finalized the hotel arrangements, which is why you have not seen PR1. PR1, ex our dates are currently August 16 through 20. The hotel is the Intercontinental uh, in Chengdu. Until Everything is locked in to the satisfaction of people who get very nervous. We're holding off on releasing PR1 until everything in PR1 we know is absolutely, completely certain. And we can't make that statement at the moment. Uh, as people may or may not realize, Membership income is a trivial part of this Worldcon, unlike every other Worldcon in the past, in the past several decades. Um, we are totally dependent on sponsorships. And we are working with various corporate and governmental entities to get sponsorships locked down. Until we get those amount, those dollar, um, well, dollar and yuan wow. amounts locked down, plans are still very, very, very much up in the air. And that has been a significant source of delay. Uh, also, anticipating questions that I know we will get. Yes, there are still substantial quarantine requirements for getting into China and Chengdu. Uh, they have decreased slightly a number of things that used to require several weeks of quarantine have now dropped down to several five-day periods of quarantine. This is still, we recognize, likely to be unacceptable to people coming from outside China. Uh, in addition, we have several cities that are undergoing partial or total lockdowns at the moment. That number of cities and those locations are a constantly changing uh, set of complications. We again recognize that people will be very reluctant to come to China in situations where they could be locked down for several months. 
uh, basically, I hope this sort of explains where some of the delays have been coming. Uh, we have been trying to be as upfront as possible about where the delays are coming from. We also recognize that the politics of China and the politics of the West are not necessarily totally compatible. And we are trying to put together a world con that brings together the traditions of Chinese fandom, which is a large and vibrant community, and the world con in general. We are spending an awful lot of time translating between the two. Are you learning Chinese? Um, in writing, please. That's smart. Yes. Uh, are we ready for questions? I believe we are. I believe okay. we are ready for questions. All right. You mentioned uh, your problems with uh, PR1. Uh, do you have a schedule for progress reports after that, and do you expect to meet those deadlines? Until we can get PR1 out, we are reluctant to put other specific schedules in. However, we recognize that there are some deadlines that are locked in from either the Constitution or the necessary administration of things. We know that the filing deadline for site selection is 180 days before the Worldcon. There is no choice on hitting that deadline. That will be the filing deadline. We recognize that in order to make the Yugos work, we really need to open things over the next couple of months. We do not have a hard deadline there. But since, as people are aware, uh, a number of us have been involved in Yugo administration in the past. Specifically, Dave has done it several times. I've been on the subcommittee several times. We know what the Yugo schedule has to look like. So those are things that are driving it. On the other hand, we are not going to wait for a progress report to get those kinds of questions and mailings done. Uh, in a cover letter that will be accompanying the mailing, the email from PR1, we will be reminding people that if you want to be on the program, please volunteer. We've got an address that's up there and working. Uh, those things are listed on our site along with some, some of the administrative addresses such as site selection at. By the time it comes time to open up Yugos, we will have all the Yugo addresses. Those things will all be in place. Uh, so there was a follow-up to something you just said. I'll do it now. You said perhaps <coughs> taking months, uh, and yet typically Hugo nominations would be open soon after the opening of the year, which is imminent. Uh, what's your timing? So um, it is our goal to have uh, online um, uh, online uh, nominations open by the end of January. Um, the the tentative uh, the tentative schedule for nomination is January for as much as we have it open, February and all of March for nomination, um, and locked in dates for other things behind. Um, so probably the web the web will come online before PR2 with the with a paper nominating ballot comes out, but a paper nominating ballot will come out in sufficient time to get things in for the end of March. Um, we have many questions coming in. We're trying to sort of bundle them. Uh, so let's ask uh, some of the questions that all of the conventions have been asked, and that is, what are your plans for streaming and recording uh, program items? Uh, 
our current game plan is to stream and re is to try to record as much as we possibly can and to stream everything that we can with the usual caveat that depends on finding sponsors to make as much of that feasible as possible. Uh, we are also intending to have as much of it translated because we recognize that there are a limited number of regular Worldcon attendees who are fluent in Chinese. Uh, we are aware of what the technology can do. Uh, several of us on this podium have watched panels being conducted where the panelists are all speaking their own native languages, like four or five of them. And the interactions are as if they could each be speaking the same language. They're listening to the translation in their ears. That takes money. That takes sponsorship. So exactly how much we're going to be able to do will, again, continually reinforce the idea that this needs sponsorship. You'll note that we have roughly 4,000 members that we acquired from the voting process. At 50 bucks a piece, that is a tiny amount compared to what a normal Worldcon would get from their first 4,000 attending memberships. Uh, for a normal Worldcon, 4,000 attending memberships would be many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars. We don't have that amount of income. As we have announced in the past, if you voted at ShyCon or, sorry, at DISCON, or for that matter, if you purchased an advanced supporting membership, i.e. a voting token, and did not vote, you are a full attending member of the convention. You have both full WISPIS rights and full attendance rights. And for anybody with full attendance rights, that also includes virtual. You have that fully. So um, I appreciate the fulsome answers. We have a lot of questions, and I'd like you to see if you can shorten your responses as much as possible so that we can get through as many of these as possible. Okay. So will you have virtual program with entirely virtual panelists for those who cannot attend in person? Yes, that, that is what we plan. We are a group trying to do that. There is a Chinese uh, group that are doing developing the program uh, on site, and then we are a small group for trying to do a virtual program. And I hope that the, this letter, as Ben was uh, speaking of, that uh, that uh, people can uh, can uh, volunteer for program, because right now we, we don't really have any connection with the actual members. So, be, uh, so I hope there are going to be people that actually volunteer for the program. Otherwise, we have been having trouble with the program participants. A follow-up to something that you said earlier about uh, uh, the quarantine situation. Uh, if people wind up needing to be quarantined, will local fans take them in instead of their having to pay longer hotel stays? That depends on the policies of the Chinese government, of which we have no control. Uh, okay, as a segue to that, what is the human rights situation in your area and country? <laughs> Challenging. Um, <laughs> I think everybody who's read the newspaper knows what's going on in China. We are working very hard to keep the Spanish contacts alive, but we recognize that we have no control over the actions of the Chinese government. Neither we nor the Chinese fans have substantial influence over the decisions by the Chinese government. Uh, 
do you have any contingency plans for the situations where you cannot uh, secure sponsorships or have your convention or do anything else like hold a business meeting? It takes 12 people to hold a business meeting. Holding a business meeting is not an issue. We will comply with all of the requirements in the Wisconsin Constitution. That's easy to do. That doesn't require a lot of sponsorship. Under contingency plans, we are working on the fly as we see what kinds of sponsorships and other kinds of decision-making processes potential sponsors have. Uh, you will note that we had about 10 people coming over from China uh, for Shikon. That set of expenses was all handled through sponsorships. Do you have contingency plans for situations <coughs> where sponsorships are not that we are expecting are not available or where COVID restrictions become significantly greater or other situations might prevent you from holding a world gun? Currently, we believe we can hold a world con. It may very well be that there will be very few non-Chinese able to attend physically at the world con. And yes, we are aware, as was true for Con Zealand, that the business meeting requires in-person attendance that requires 12 people. We're not concerned about that. Uh, just to repeat, um, business meeting participation requires in-person attendance is, the, is what you're saying? Yes, that's, uh, that was discussed extensively for Con Zealand, and that's pretty much what our rules require. Uh, will you have electronic voting for the Hugo Awards and for site selection? We will certainly have it for the Hugo Awards. Uh, we cannot make any determination about having it for site selection until such time as everybody who has filed since the decision concerning <coughs> electronic voting requires permission from not only the administering committee, but every bidder must also agree to permit electronic site selection. And until after the filing deadline, we do not know whether a bidder may file and object to electronic site selection. So we cannot make that determination. Um, sorry. Um, will the content be recorded if the stream is not available due to law uh, and uh, to restrictions on video on demand and thus make it available as a recorded video on demand at a later date rather if you can't stream it out for whatever reason? We will always be in compliance with Chinese law, whatever the Chinese law says we can and cannot do, that will always determine what we can do. We have absolutely no intention that anybody be arrested for violating local law in order to put on a world con. That is not fair to fandom, either non-Chinese fandom or Chinese fandom. Okay. How many members do you have and how many do you anticipate? We currently have 4, 000, roughly 4,000 full members. We have taken in several hundred <coughs> of the five-day attendance packages and I believe I have seen two people who have bought the combination of a five-day attendance package and a WISPIS membership. 
Uh, for people who have voted but have not uh, received any kind of confirmation of their membership, when can they expect confirmation? Um, two things. Number one, when PR1 comes out, that will give you confirmation. The other thing is that if you go to our webpage and click on the register button, it will say enter your email address. It will give you a magic token. It will give you a magic URL which you will click, and it will then tell you what your membership status is. Is that if available now? That is available now. Okay. If the Google change you World Cup. Yeah. Uh, Go for the en.chengduworldcom.com, otherwise you'll get the Chinese version, although you'll see a little en in the upper right hand corner, if you click that, you'll get the English version. I also suspect that it's available from the WISFIS webpage. Uh, Worldcon.org yes. should have the correct link now. It didn't a few weeks ago. There we go. Um, and I'm sorry, we, that wasn't on mic. Worldcon.org uh, should have the correct link available now. Right. The other thing to be aware of is that, as with any registration process, we know that there are likely to be some number of errors. If you go through this process and it looks like you do not have a membership, you should email us at the addresses listed on the website and let us know that you thought you had a membership this is why you thought you had a membership, and it says that you don't, and we will investigate and let you know and try and correct it if it's our error. And someone with a more technological brain than mine points out you should use the email that you used for voting or site selection at DC th at DISCOM 3. Right. The, the, this is your official email address insofar as Chengdu is concerned. All right, moving on. Okay. Uh, will you be publishing a membership list, and when? We have not decided. Uh, there are privacy implications to publishing a membership list, and we just do, have not reached any final decision. Okay. Will you be able to take international membership payments by credit card before the December 31st deadline for Hugo nomination eligibility? We certainly hope so. Uh, we will have to figure something out with banks. We have been having banking issues. Uh, we have received some potential offers this weekend, in fact, for ways to circumvent it. And we will do our absolute best to get this stuff going. Okay. Uh, when will we have details regarding Hugo voting? Dave? We, we hold Hugo's. No. Um, so there should be a, there should be an email blast going out to people with all of the information about nominating and your uh, information about logging into the website that should go out slightly before the website opens up for people to nominate. So that should be sometime in mid-January. Um, there's likely to be an email from ShyCon8 about uh, about stuff to let folks to, to remind folks uh, about the upcoming Chengdu uh, and participating as well. This should happen, I believe, slightly even before that. So there's a couple different blasts that will be sending out uh, nominating information to people coming up in the next six weeks or so. Okay. If uh, all the 2025 bidders want to use electronic site selection, will the convention use electronic site selection? We have not reached a final determination, but it seems awfully likely. Um, we have consulted with some voting security experts as to any possible holes in the software that is being used last year, and they're going to be reporting back to us. Okay. Uh, the final written question that we have here uh, is how are you doing with filling your staffing needs and uh, what are you currently most worried about for your convention 
And is there anything you need from this community? Um, the way we are staffing is essentially we are running a, a parallel set of staff. At least at the senior level, what we are trying to do is pair a relatively inexperienced Chinese talent, but not a lot of experience, certainly at the Worldcom level, with a corresponding Worldcon experienced person. I have a Chinese co-chair. Uh, Dave has Chinese seconds. Carolina has a Chinese team as well as a Worldcon experienced team. We are fine on the Chinese side. Well, we still need a couple of people on the Chinese side, but nobody here is going to help with that. Um, we are always looking for more volunteers to be the other half of a Chinese Worldcon experience team. Uh, for those of us who attended the 2007 Worldcon uh, in Nippon, uh, there was, to some degree, a, a flavor of there were two conventions happening in the same place. There was an English language convention, and there was a Japanese language convention, and there was not a, there was some, but not a lot of overlap. In light of that, how would you describe what you think is going to happen in Chengdu? Um, there are two scenarios. The first scenario is that nobody from outside China can get into China. That scenario, we will have to essentially work things out in ways that let the program be far more heavily virtualized. In terms of assuming a non-trivial number of non-Chinese can get into the country, then we are going to take advantage of the fact that most of the younger fans, and Chinese fandom is young, you are looking at, you are looking at division hits being in the 30s, uh, and at the first or second World Cup. Um, so it's a rather young fandom, and many, certainly not all, of the younger fans speak English to a certain extent. Assuming people want to come and attend the convention, uh, how long does it take to get a visa, what is the process like, and how difficult is it to do? Right now, you don't want to know the answer to that. Uh, yes, we do. Take a shot. Okay, so, so the uh, a visa process for Japan. China. In, for China. China. My, my apologies. Thinking to John's question and remembering the good old days. Um, so uh, uh, the visa process for China is is exacting. Um, so the the um, the important bit about it is. Uh, is that the forms that you fill out have to be correct and accurate when you bring them up, uh, which can be difficult the first time. Uh, myself, living as a person in Chicago, it took me three trips to the consulate. Now, fortunately, I lived in Chicago and the consulate was in Chicago, and I was winging it. I didn't do my research beforehand. So that, that meant that I had to come back a couple times. It's not, ultimately, it wasn't that difficult. There were things that led me to, this is how you fill it out, this is how you do your, your, your invitation letter, and, and it's all good. So it is something that should be looked at beforehand with some care. It's not ultimately that difficult unless you treat it uh, lightly as I did, and then you might have to do it a couple times. Um, the, uh, because you know bureaucracies are bureaucracies, um, and so the, the bureaucrat that takes in the form, if the form is wrong, they're not very helpful in getting you to, in, in fixing it. Um, 
So, so in, the, in that respect, that's not what we're typically used to on, on, tra on, on places that we travel to. That's a, that's a different experience than we're used to and something that people should take some care about. Um, a visa costs uh, a little bit of money. Um, it, I, I'm trying to remember our, our, one, our one trip visa was on the order of it was like $150 is what I'm remembering for, for a visa that covered that, that covered the one day the, the one the, the one trip. Um, there are more expensive visas that, that cover multiple trips, but theoretically for attending Worldcon you should only need one trip. Um, so uh, so it is it, it's a it, it is not a trivial process, but it's not um, it, it's it's not terribly difficult. Another thing to note, however, is that some of the complications are coming from the U.S. side, for those of us who are living in the U.S. Uh, that I live in Dallas, in the Dallas metro area at the moment. Uh, there used to be a Chinese consulate in the Dallas area, and the paperwork, you used to walk into the consulate in the Dallas area. Um, approximately a year ago, the State Department decided that the Dallas Consulate was being used as a spy headquarters and shop, shop. And I now need to file my visa application at the Washington, D.C. Embassy. There is no easier way to do it for somebody living in Dallas. Chicago is still open, New York is still open, there are a number of others that are still open, unless the State Department and the Chinese government get into another fight. For those of uh, us in North America who are used to traveling overseas for world cons and tagging on some tourism with that, what are the possibilities for travel within China uh, if we also want to attend Chengdu? Visas have geographic restrictions in addition. Visas generally do not allow unlimited travel throughout China. They, a visa that allows you into Chengdu will allow you into many of the major gateway cities and areas so that, for example, your visa that lets you into Chengdu will also let you do travel to Beijing or Shanghai or something like that, but it will not allow you unlimited travel throughout China. Carolina? Well, well, I think the tricky part is that you need an invitation. I don't know how they're going to do that, but otherwise, if it, it I, I don't know how it's going to be. The Chinese needs to get open and it, the quarantine needs to go away, but otherwise, you need to, know where your, your tour is. You have to kind of uh, tell in the application where you are going to be. But otherwise, you can travel in, in China. Also note that you, in order to get your visa, you have to give them your physical passport, which they will hold while they are processing. So you need to find a time when you are not going to need your passport potentially for several weeks while they are in the process of processing your passport visa application. Okay, this is another question we've asked other conventions. Uh, is your space fully accessible? And are, are there areas that will be difficult to negotiate if you are in a lobby or, or using it? Canes, crutches, or what have you. The existing facility is fully accessible. That was an interesting answer. Are you planning on using the existing facility? We are planning on using the existing facility, but as I had indicated at the very beginning of this presentation, until the contracts are signed and locked in, those of you who have worked me, with me through many, many decades are aware of the fact that I am of the sort of person who believes that 
the purpose of silver linings is to bring dark clouds with them. <laughs> any, any other questions for, that people want to ask? Never written questions? Thank the pan thanks the representatives from Chengdu for their time and answers. <laughs>